My first experience of spinning uh, was when I was visiting Unst. I went up there to, to work at the castle and my landlady took me to visit her next door neighbour. It was Mary Jean Peterson and she was one of the very finest spinners that I know in Unst. And, uh, she said, did I want to see her spinning? So, of course, I was interested. I said, yes, I would. And uh, she took her wheel out and she showed me what she did, how she prepared the fleece and how she spun it. And then she said, would you like a go? So I said, well, are you, are you sure? She says, yes, she says, you won't be able to hurt the wheel. <laughs> so I had a go. And compared to Mary Jean's spinning, mine was like a cable rope. <laughs> Something which could easily tie up the Queen Elizabeth <laughs> if it was necessary. Um, but that was enough. I got bitten with the bug and I was very keen to start just as soon as I'd uh, married my husband because I met him when I came up to once that first time and we were married the following year. And I don't know if he ever thought that I was serious, but uh, he finally was convinced and he, he got a wheel for me. And I've been spinning ever since. <laughs> Flora's going to lead them all. She says, I'm the leader of the pack. Come on, get, 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 get. Come on, kitty, kitty. Come on, come on, get, 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 get. Come on. This is Cochran, and uh, this is our croft. Uh, we keep our sheep um, over the other side of the burn and to the north, right up through the mires towards uh, Sandwater. Uh, we have to wait for, for the new fleece. Um, until after we've sheared the sheep and that can be any time now. Ours aren't sheared at the moment but our neighbours in the valley have already sheared their sheep and it's at that stage where I can get my hands on the fleece and take my pick <laughs> and uh, I just select the nicest fleeces for, for hand spinning. It's a nice open fleece which has got plenty of crimp Crimp is like you've almost put a Marcel wave into the lock on the sheep. The crimp helps it all to stay together and you want the very finest part of the fleece for fine spinning and you find that around the neck which is why it is so difficult because that's the part of the fleece which is always being rubbed with the sheep moving its head and it felt really quite easily, particularly with, you know, the weather getting wet and then the heat from the sun. And it also gets full of the vegetation, seeds, heather, you name it, you can find it in the sheep. Now I use shampoo to wash my fleece. I work on the principle if it's not going to strip the natural oils from my own hair, it won't strip all of the natural oil from the fleece because I just want to remove the uh, dirt and vegetation if possible from the fleece before I spin it. And it's quite a simple process. I grasp it firmly by the cut ends, the butts, and then I just waggle it backwards and forwards in the water. The water is quite warm. You don't need to worry about felting it at this stage. And then I 
swap it around, hold it by the tips of the fleece and carry on wiggling it. When I got it, most of it out, I just put it over the rack to drip and go on to the next one. You can get quite a speed up doing this but you are just using small locks at a time because if you have too much at a time it's unworkable, it's unmanageable when you come to, to comb it. By the time I've finished there'll be quite a noticeable layer of peat at the bottom of the the bowl. See all the peat here. When I've washed the locks I then rinse them and I just take them in exactly the same way and swish them about, turn them over and then they go onto the next tray to drip. Um, I found by trial and error that if you spin dirty fleece when you're spinning fine you trap the tiny bits of peat into the yarn you, that you're spinning and you can never wash it out afterwards so it's best to wash the fleece get rid of that peat. The small pieces of vegetation that you can still see in the locks, that will come out when you comb. And you can pick it out actually as you're spinning. But you can never get those tiny, tiny specks of peat away again. And you'll see even more specks of the peat in the rinsing water as well and then I just pick these up and squeeze them they do remain separate so there's no need to worry about that And then I'll take those, I've got um, a double-sided radiator and I just lay them on the top of that and they dry out very nicely. Uh, these are three of uh, the wheels that, that I have. Uh, these two Robbie bought back from the sale room at some time and I just uh, cleaned them up and made sure that they were all working. This is a, a, a typical Shetland wheel with the single treadle and you've got the scotch tensioner coming down from this bar above. Uh, this one I'm not sure but I think is what they call the scotch wheel. It's like a Hebridean wheel but I think it's smaller and again this has got the same bar here for a scotch tensioner over the top and this is a modern Ashford wheel. This was one that he designed for his wife Joy. It's called a Joy wheel um, and the joy of it is that it will all uh, take apart. The flyer comes out and sits in there. This comes undone. That piece will fold up and the whole thing can then be laid flat on a seat or in the boot of your car for travelling. You can even pile them up, one on top of the other, which um, when Mum and I used to be travelling to guild meetings and to demonstrations, we used to do. And there was still room in the car for the children. It's difficult to start afresh from an old wheel that has got 
get uh, a lot of wear, particularly if the wheel itself is not spinning true. It's much easier on a modern wheel, particularly the Ashfords, they are very, very kind to people starting to spin. It's so easy to spin on them. These, are, they are workable, they're fine, but you have to get used to their um, idiosyncrasies. And once you know how them and how to adjust the tension on them, they, they, they can produce really very nice yarn. This is very good because with the double treadle, if you want to go round the other way, you can. Because you spin going clockwise and you ply putting two strands together anti-clockwise. They do say it's very good for you because you're using both of your legs so that uh, you don't wear one knee out. <laughs> Absolutely true, the wheel. There's no waving backwards and forwards. But I don't know about this one. Let's have a look and see how this one goes. Yes, it's got a bit of a wobble on it. Can you see it? Robbie had a, a phase of coming home from the sale room <sighs> with all these different wheels needing care and attention. <laughs> oh yes, that one's got a good wobble in it. If they've got too much of a wobble in them, they can sometimes throw your drive band completely off. See, that's the difference between a, a single treadle and a double treadle. Can you see that the wheel goes fast and slow, depending upon where the, the treadle is? Well, with the double treadle, it keeps a completely even speed. After it's washed and it's dried, it looks like this. And the next step then is to comb it. Now, if I weren't wearing a pair of black trousers, I'd have a dark cloth on my lap because it helps for you to see what you're doing. When you're spinning particularly, it helps you to see what twist there is in the yarn. But I comb it out with an ordinary dog's comb. I prefer that to um, a plastic comb because it's so much stronger. And I want to get all these little bits that you can see out of the lock of wool. Now these come um, when the animal is sheared with a little bit of the new wool that the sheep is growing. You, because this part is last year's fleece and then <coughs> There's a natural break in the wool on a Shetland sheep, but when they shear, they always get a little bit of the new growth in, so you need to get the, that little bit of new growth away, because otherwise it'll just pill and work out of your yarn. And then we're all ready to, to start spinning. So now I've uh, prepared the fleece and started to spin, I'm going to be spinning it on my new Shetland style wheel. This is the one that I use for most of my spinning, unless I'm travelling and then I use the, the Ashford Joy. And you need quite a lot of spin in the yarn. If you don't have enough spin, it will just literally fall to pieces. 
because there are so few fibres in there that the spin holds them closely together. It's easy to check because I'll just relax and let the yarn go back on itself and then you can see that there is a good twist in there and it will hold together. Because you have to remember also when you ply the yarn, some of the twist will come away. You, I always spin uh, clockwise and then I ply the yarn anti-clockwise, which is why some of the twist is lost. To begin with, it's, it's the fibre itself. You really do need a fine fibre to spin really fine. You can always spin quite well on other fleeces, but it will never be as, as fine as the, the finest. And for spinning fine, it makes good adjustment of your wheel you mustn't have too much pull on the yarn else before you can actually get your twist in the, the, the thread is gone and patience because if you want to rush if you like to put a lot of fleece through your wheel in one sitting, uh, fine spinning isn't for you <laughs> because one of these little locks of fleece can take me quite a while to finish. This is an all over jumper for, for Robbie. This is the, the latest. As I said, he, he likes as fine a yarn in his jumper as I'm willing to spin. He doesn't like thick, thick jumpers at all. So, uh, as you see, it's, I don't know if you see it against the black, but it, it's, it's quite a fine, a fine yarn. And it drapes very nicely and you can make some really good patterns with it. You find more of a difference, I think, mm -hmm. between knitting with um, a woolen yarn and um, something that uh, is man-made. They're not very nice at all. I don't like knitting with those after knitting with proper wool. Preparing your fleece and, and then uh, the spinning is extremely good for, for getting rid of stress. I used to um, go to a spinning group with my mother on a Friday night after a full week at work and my mother couldn't go unless I took her because uh, she didn't drive and I'd get home from work and think oh the last thing I want to do is get up after dinner and go out but I felt a little bit guilty so I would do it. That's and then, as I was coming back home, I'd be really chirpy and happy and feel so much better. I'd got rid of all the stress of a week's teaching, which can be quite stressful. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's, I think, the easiest way to explain it to to you the effect that you'd have. You were all ready then for a, a nice weekend. You'd met your friends, you'd had a, a chat and you'd done spinning. <laughs>